Hey guys, so uh, today we're going to talk about math and speed density and what's the difference and why you should want one over the other and you know, when you might want to use one as opposed to another, things like that. And also give you a quick primer on how to set it up with Ecutech RaceROM. Uh, so the first thing you see here is that we have a ZA1J A1C. It's a USDM 86 ROM. Uh, and here you see the math scaling table. So basically the way uh, things work with the mass airflow sensor is you're actually measuring uh, the mass of the air that is entering the entering the engine, or you're estimating, I guess you could say, uh, the mass of the air that's enter, entering the engine using the MAF sensor. And on our cars, it has what's called a heated wire MAF sensor, where essentially the ECU is trying to maintain the same temperature of a piece of wire, and as more air passes by it, it takes more uh, energy to you know keep that same temperature, and it's able to estimate uh, roughly how much air uh, is flowing past that wire and by taking that grams per second, reading the mass airflow and doing a little bit of math involving the engine speed RPM, you can figure out how many grams per revolution or what your load value is. Uh, so that's one important thing to note is that this is not a fueling calibration table, it's a load calibration table. These values, if I were to go in here and mess these all up, it doesn't just mess up the fueling, it messes up anything that references load, including timing and things like that. Uh, but if you see here, you have basically a 0 to 5 volt scale, and then over here are your gram per second values, and this is an estimation. So you, you have to go in here and tell it, you know, at 2.227 volts, that means there's 20.055 grams per second of air flowing past the sensor. And it's pretty simple. I mean, this is basically just what the ECU uses uh, to determine how much air it's ingesting, and then calculate proper timing and fueling and things like that. So the benefit to a mass airflow system is that it's really good at measuring airflow at low, at low speed. So you can see down here they give you lots of calibration points. It's fairly simple. It's very straightforward to set up. Uh, there's not a whole lot of points that you have to worry about taking care of when you're trying to dial things in. Uh, it's basically easy mode as far as load calculation goes. Um, the downside is that as you can see, there's also a hard limit on the high end. So in the case of the stock scaling here, that limits 279 grams per second. And once you hit that limit, uh, you only have a couple options, one of which is to make the tube bigger. Of course, PV equals NRT. So as the tube gets bigger, the air slows down. Uh, and that also causes problems because once it gets so slow, it gets to the point that it gets really hard to meter on the low end, and you'll end up with some pretty crappy drivability. Uh, so it's not really necessarily just a win-win to make a bigger tube. I mean, it, it does have downsides as well. And even if you do run a 3-inch MAF, you're still only looking at maybe 315 to 330 grams per second, something like that. And, uh, you know, in my experience, that you usually max that out by the time you're on E85 with the turbo car. You're pretty much going to have to go to a speed density setup at some point. So uh, we'll go ahead and look at that. So this is the speed density equivalent of what you just saw with the MAF scaling table. and This is called a VE map or volumetric efficiency map. Uh, and just to give you a quick primer, the way speed density works is it doesn't measure the airflow directory directly or attempt to estimate it with a sensor. Instead, it says that if you know the pressure of the air, the speed that it's moving, its temperature, and you have an estimation of the volumetric efficiency of the motor, then you can make an estimation as to what the load is. So you can see here in this case you have across the x-axis manifold absolute pressure and on the y-axis you have engine speed and you know, the values of the cells are an estimation of the engine's volumetric efficiency. Uh, now the benefit to this is that there's no upper limit. You don't have a sensor to max out. So you can pretty much run it up as high as you want. Now there is one little caveat with that. The way that Ecutech implements this is that internally it takes this calculation, generates a MAF grams per second value and then replaces the output channel with that. And so basically it's just replacing the math you know, with uh, the calculation. So when you do that, you do still want to go in here and if you go into limiters, uh, mass airflow reading limit, you're still going to want to up this because uh, you know, it's just replacing that channel. It's not, not really a true speed density system, quote unquote. It's, it's uh, you know, it's an implementation on a stock uh, mass airflow based load calculation system. So just to, you know, 
show you what's there to let you know what some of the downsides are to this is that obviously there's a lot more points that you have to worry about calibrating. So getting the drivability and stuff, particularly on the low end, low speed uh, parking lot drivability is a lot harder. It's a lot more time consuming. Uh, that's not to say that it can't be done. I mean, it certainly can, but it takes a lot more time and, and it's a little bit more finicky. Also, as temperatures change and depending on your configuration, uh, if temperatures change or if manifold pressure changes, things like that, uh, you have to make sure that you know this whole thing is actually calibrated properly. And sometimes it's hard. I mean, you know, you might have to drop your boost all the way down to wastegate pressure to get around this area, and then kind of slowly increment it up and try to collect data in all these points so that you can make sure everything's calibrated properly. And frankly, it's kind of a pain in the ass. So that's why some people don't like it. Um, you know, the car's been using speed density for a really long time. It works, you know, it works pretty well for them. Evo 10s, for instance, use a hybrid setup from the factory, and it's, you know, perfectly fine. So with Ecutech, you actually have the option of running a hybrid setup, which is probably the best of both worlds. Now, you can see here, like I said, it uses pressure, engine speed, an estimation of volumetric efficiency, and intake air temperature to make the calculation. So uh, three out of those four <laughs> are in this map. Uh, the other one you're going to have to get depending on uh, what your setup is, and you'll set that up here with the charge air temperature acquisition method. Uh, if you have a blow-through MAF on a turbo setup, then you're pretty much set because you can use the MAF, turn the MAF sensor's internal air temperature sensor. Because the MAF is after the intercooler, so it's actually measuring the charge air temperature. If you have a draw-through MAF, you don't really have that option. You're going to have to use a fixed calibration temperature. Uh, like the default is here, and then you're going to have to go in here to the temperature compensations, and you can see they put in some defaults for you here, but uh, it's not as good. I mean, really, you're going to want to use an actual charge air temperature sensor, and the closer to the intake manifold, the better. Uh, one thing that you could do is wire in a GM intake air temperature sensor, wire it to the rear O2 sensor or the CPC pressure sensor, and then, you know, make a scaling map and uh, kind of set this up the old school way, which is to have a custom map with map pressure on the x-axis and RPM on the y, and then you put the MAF grams per second values directly in the cells, and then you could set up some temperature compensations based on uh, the input from the GMIAT. So it's a little bit more complicated, uh, but luckily most of the forced induction kits that are available for the 86 use a blow-through MAF configuration, which makes it a lot easier. So just to give you a quick primer as to how you would set it up, uh, I already showed you the charge air temperature acquisition method. To enable it, you can basically just pick which map modes you want it to be available in, and you can set whether you want it to activate below or above thresholds. And that's for when you're wanting to run a hybrid system. Now, the big advantage to a hybrid system is that you get to use the math on the low end where it's good, and speed density on the high end where it's good. So it's kind of, I mean, it definitely is the best of both worlds. And you could do it here with math, so you might say, you know, if your MAF's pegging out around 315 grams per second, you might set it up so that here you know you have a high value of 300 and a low value of maybe 290 or something so that when the mass airflow reading goes past 300, you switch into speed density, and then when it goes back down below 290, it'll go back into MAF mode. And that way you can retain the easy tuning drivability of the MAF sensor uh, without having to worry about you know, just pegging it out and going lean or running too much timing or something like that. Uh, another way that you could do it is with manifold absolute pressure. So if you want to run speed density when you're in boost and then uh, MAF when you're in vacuum or just whatever, however you want to do it. Uh, there's also an RPM threshold that you can use, uh, which is also just another way of setting up the hybrid. And of course you can mix and match these and use more than one if you want. But uh, So if you're not using the charge air temperature sensor, you're going to have to put in a calibration temperature. Uh, so I just, I don't know, I've never had to do one that didn't have a blow through, so I don't know if this is a good value or not, but it's what Ecutec suggests. Uh, one of the other calibrations that you have to know is the, uh, the actually need to know the cylinder uh, displacement, but in Ecutec it just tells you to put in the engine displacement, which in this case you wouldn't change unless you, you know, put in like a big bore kit or something like that or stroker, but uh, for most people you won't have to change that. The temperature compensations I already showed you, uh, and then the other one's just a throttle delta comp, which is very similar to the uh, you know, throttle tip and enrichment that you get 
uh, with the it's kind of it's just basically like an accelerator pump on a carburetor uh, it's not really all that complex you can see it's just uh, adding volume efficiency so here's your throttle delta 20 to minus 2 and then this is just a compensation against engine RPM for the load calculation. Uh, the meat of it, of course, though, is in the volumetric efficiency map. And this is where you'll go in to do all your calibration uh, for the load calculation. So really, that's about it. I mean, they make a big deal out of it. Like, you know, it's this super complex thing. But really, it's pretty simple. It's just two different ways of calculating load, one of which is based on reading a value that's still an estimation, but you're reading it directly from a sensor. And the other one, it's basically just a formula that takes the input from a couple different sensors and comes up with the same number. In the end, it all resolves to grams per revolution, which is load, which is what you see in here. Like if you were to go look at, say, a uh, fueling map, uh, these values right here, engine load grams per rev, that's what both of those end up resolving to in the end. So it's two ways of solving the same problem. So, you know, it's some of each is better for its own purpose and the cool thing for us is that we can use Ecutech, run a hybrid and get the best of both worlds. So that's about it.